southwest showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that ran. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. art of back trolling. We live in an era right now where we are covered up with guys out on the river fishing with bobbers and beads, fishing jigs and pink worms, and nobody's out there back trolling plugs and diver in bait anymore. On today's episode, we're gonna focus in on the techniques on how to be successful back trolling plugs and diver and bait. Jerry, we're pulling up in the first spot right here, and what I'm looking at is it looks like you have basically two different currents coming together, and anytime I'm looking for plug water, I like that ripple. Yep. That nice chopped up water refracts the light, makes the fish feel a little bit more comfortable, and it condenses them. And that's what we're trying to do out here. We're always trying to eliminate water and figure out exactly where they're going to be. And this low clear water helps immensely. So when you look at this hole, since this is your river, what are you looking for? So what we're going to do is we're going to row up well above. I drop my plugs in well above where I think the first fish might be and mm -hmm. push them down. I try to stay out of the sight picture of the fish, right. and then I push into the fish. So it's nice and subtle and, and it starts pushing those fish back. We have that wall and the wall runs all the way down the edge here and gravel on the left. So I'm gonna run my 3.5, a little deeper running, a little faster current on my right side. And in this case, I'm going to run my bright pink, my really aggressive plug on the, on the right side to push them off the wall. The wall is their security there. So they're gonna to try to tuck into cracks and little, little spots in that wall, but I want a big aggressive plug to push them out of that and not even give them the option. We're gonna run the 3.0 on the left because it's a little shallower and I'm hoping they're gonna come around the, the big plug, see the little guy, crush the little guy. And you were talking, you like this bright pink and maybe something even a little bit more aggressive. Yep. With that shark, shoot some blue butt. Yep. Cloud cover, I like gold, so I can go with this gold with the black bill and black back. Well, the reason why we're going to go to divers here right now in this spot is typically when you're running a plug, you definitely want to have a little bit faster water, more broken water. This little stretch right here is it's what we call laminar flow. It's really flat, but they're not going to be too aggressive. So you come in to them a little bit more subtle. So we're going to run divers and coon trim, sand trim. And then I even have a setup right now with a rig that I call my wacky rig. So instead of running a typical bait diver, I'm actually going to run a plug, a maglip, as my diver on a very short dropper that I've wrapped up with fish nip. And then in behind that, I'll run my coon shrimp. And you can see it has just single hook there. That way we can still run three hooks. And so with these lighter rods, you're gonna be able to see that fish pick it up. And then you're gonna be up and going for it by the time the rod kind of goes. Amy Cooner, a couple Cooners. So 
but then we're golden. So, plug rod, right side. Okay. There's the wacky rig. And how far? Uh, you're going 35 feet. <sighs> you killed me with that. 35 feet, man. Don't mess with my program. I know. I'm not going to mess with your program that much. It killed me because I'm in gin clear water and I want to kick him back there 60, 70 feet because that's the way I fish in clear water, but it's not my river, not my boat. It's bad enough. I brought my own gear. <laughs> we just put out the uh, wacky rig setup. Now we're going to get our other one rolling here. This is just your basic standard diver. That's all black and nice, calm, subtle uh, presentation going back there. You're not going to spook the fish too much with this. A longer leader just because we are in clear water, about six foot, down to a tiny little spin glow, again, purple and pink, not too intrusive and then our coon shrimp. This time of year, we're keeping a really close eye on these light rods. The second we see a tap, we're picking it up and setting the hook. So we might miss fish by doing that, but we do not want to hook them deep. So I just ask that if you are going to be running diver and bait anytime in your local rivers, make sure that it's either early in the season or if you are going to do it later in the season, run bigger hooks, lock your drag down, and the second you see a tap, pick it up and try and get on that fish. We don't want to injure any wild fish. Fish there you go. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> That's your rod. Of course, it's his rod. It's in the middle. Come off? Yep. Well, that's all right. That is exactly what we just talked about. We didn't let that fish take it too much. As soon as it started biting, got on him real quick. We got a splash. That's all that matters. Look at all Yeah, those crawl fish. Of course, it was your rod. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, we had a double. <laughs> that was on the wacky rig right there. Uh-huh. Well, that was fun. <laughs> and that's the problem with running plugs in slow water. They just don't eat it hard. Yeah. And you just don't get the bite very well. The biggest ones, huh? Well, that one in there is pretty big. big. That's the guy I like, that size right there. So on this setup. I like to run a chartreuse spinning glow or anything in front of my shrimp. It gives a lot of contrast. So what I did is I took a spinning glow, tore the wings off. It actually cuts through the water really well, being that it's reversed. I don't want any spin. All right, so that's going to cut through the water just like that. You know, now on that bait, you see how long that whisker is? I don't want them to nip me off, so I'm going to pop that off right there at my trailer hook. Just like that. That way my trailer hook's right there on the end. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. Plug fishing, you need to have a system. What I mean by having a system is that you need the exact same rod, reel, line, terminal tackle, all the way down to your plug for everything to work properly. That's just not one rod, that's every rod in your boat. So let's start off first with the rod. What I like to have most of the time when I'm pulling plugs, I'm in a drift boat or in a small power boat, usually right around an eight foot long rod is perfect, it's ideal. You go eight and a half, it's a little long, seven six, you're not getting enough action out of the rod to work the plug. Now, what you're looking for in a fishing rod is something with a really nice light tip, so that way it's not pulling on the plug, it's allowing the plug to work. But then it has plenty of backbone to turn that fish once he's hooked up. For our line, this is 40 pound maximum braid eight. And we can get away with that 40 pound for two reasons. One, that braid eight is very thin, and the fish are coming up from behind the lure, so they don't necessarily see the line, so we're not too concerned about it even being high vis. And a reel, line counter reels. I cannot stress that enough. You need to have precision when you have your lines back there. Everything needs to be perfectly set behind the boat so that way you're forcing those fish into those pinch points. 
Moving down to our terminal tackle, 40 pound Maxima Braid 8. And I have that down to a small tornado chain swivel from Fishfield. And then just a little rubber bumper up on top so that way you aren't reeling the chain swivel up into your eyelid. Down here, I have 12 pound Maxima Ultra Green. Now, some guys will run fluorocarbon, but I actually prefer monofilament because it's a little bit more limp, a little bit more soft. And I want this plug to have as much action as possible. And if you also notice right here, I have two dual locks down to my plug. Now, the reason why is because it just gives it, again, more freedom of movement. We want that plug working independent. We don't want it getting pulled by the line or by the rod. So adding two dual locks will help it move a little bit more freely. We want it to hunt. Now down here to your plug, you can run 3.0 mag lips, 3.5s, fat wigglers. There's a lot of different plug options out there, whatever you have the most confidence in. And then on the bottom down here, you can add a little bit of scent. And if you do, put it right there in the belly in between the two hooks. Now the stock hooks that come on these are great. They all work just fine, but after a fish or two, they tend to bend out. So what I've done here is I've actually put on two different fish field hooks of different sizes. These are the titanium ones, and the reason why I like these they're just super sharp right out of the package. I know if a fish even looks at it funny, we're gonna get them stuck. There's a, a lot of fish will stop, different temperature of water. Plus if there's anything waiting to go up that creek, any fish coming by are gonna stop and wait with them whether they're going up the creek or not. So we're gonna dump them in there and see if we can push them out of that creek mouth. Got them. Oh, he's running hard. Oh, he's coming at me. <laughs> Plug takedown. Plug in. Dr. Death, baby. Dr. Yeah. Death. <laughs> see, back trolling can be fun and exciting. Yes, it can. <laughs> I think there is. There he is. Oh, he ate that. He's chewing on it. He's chewing on it. He's chewing on it. Oh, man. Ooh, that's this one. Ooh, that's color. <laughs> Just hanging. Just hanging. So I'll go upstream of you here. Ready, go. Very nice. Sweet. Yeah, bud. So that fish ate Dr. Death, and it was perfectly right where Jared said it was going to be right there at the mouth of that creek and Jared that was out 37. You know you did. <laughs> Sneak on in there and I'll hold his tail and you can pop that hook out. Perfect. I love bucks this time of year man. They fight so hard. Yeah I got a bunch of nice jumps out of that guy. Yeah that was great. Yeah, just getting that blush just a little bit after a week. It's getting a little green. Yeah, just kind of let them start sliding. Whenever you're ready, yeah. Go ahead. That was perfect. He went away not too Dude, fast. You still see that little gray ghost just swimming. Yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, Dr. Death. Yeah. I told you I wasn't going to screw around anymore up on my killers. Dr. Death. Oh, there's a lot of paint, paint marks on it. Dude, I, I love all the different plug colors out there, and there's so many really cool ones, but Winter Steel Edge Dr. Death just slays. It just works. Put it on again. Yeah. Started turning the boat too, so Rod just. Yeah, yeah I just pulled it into him. <laughs> so a lot of times, yeah, you'll pull when you get that uh, that big takedown, and he's just chewing on it. You can swing the boat into the, into the rod, really bring it really tight, to make sure it doesn't come off. So that worked out good. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time.
The first thing that you want to do after landing a nice fish is always check your gear. Now that fish, once we got it in the net, it bent some hooks out, we switched them up, got them all freshened up. Captain Tine Knots. Any more good holes in the rest of the river? <laughs> we only fished two. <laughs> this was like a marginal one. <laughs> this is like the first one, like, oh, they might be in here. Let's just drop them in there real quick. Okay, they're there. Whatever. So we just got done retying there. And then that last fish had a little bit of sand shrimp sent on there. Drop a little bit more on, right there again between the two hooks. Just enough to give them a little flavor. But this is something that we try and do a lot too, is switch up plug colors. Now we only had our gear in there for maybe, what, two minutes, most, not even that. <laughs> but anytime you're hitting the exact same group of fish, constantly changing up scent, changing up color, size, action, style of your gear, that can be the difference between catching only one fish or three or four fish. Ooh, that thing's bright. Uh -huh. Yeah, baby. Oh, that one just got tapped. You see that? There, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So there. Yep. Oh, yeah, there he goes. <laughs> oh, Phil Rod, Phil Rod's got hit or something. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Death! Damn it! <laughs> it's a monster. Biggest deal I'd ever. That's a cutty. Oh, it's a cutthroat. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead and pull us over to the side and I'll... Yeah. Is that what they're doing? They're just coming in and behind the spawning steel in? They're tearing into the spawning beds and eating as many eggs as they can. A lot of the rivers around here, we have a lot of resident cutthroat. A lot of the rivers have, you know, some coastal cutthroat that push in the rivers around the spawning time. This one's probably a resident cutthroat, being that we're right in front of a creek mouth, probably backed up out of that creek to, to feed on steelhead eggs. Sure. You know, it's that time of year, it's springtime, you know, back out and, and gorge on all that protein, so. Well, that was cool, and that was Dr. Death again. Not not yeah. what we were after, no. but hey, I'll, that's rod one of folded, the that's rod one of the folded. Hard, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the harder fish to catch in the river, too. Bonus Absolutely. points, man, yeah. bonus points. You could run three dialers. I did this hole, so we got a big slide that comes in. Um, there's big, there's bedrock slabs and uh, and big cobble, you know, two basketball sizes that slide in about halfway in to where it meets bedrock, and then there's sand on the far right. So the far right's gonna be about six feet deep. We're gonna run the 3.0 down that side. And then we're gonna run the 3.5 on the left, so it dives deeper and really gets into all those rock crevices. Very important to match your gear to the structure you're fishing. Very important. Still there. Yep. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's you, buddy. That's me. Oh, yeah, he's gone. He's gone. You sure? No, he's still there. No, he's not. Damn it. Here you go. I think Jerry just mentioned I got stuff in my face. That's how you miss fish. Think that you're okay? You got a second to eat a sandwich? Nope. He crushed it. Wasn't even paying attention. I got on the fish late. He swam straight up at us, put slack in the line, came off. That fish just crushed that. He crushed it pretty good. He throttled it. That was a better fish, too. Yeah, it was. I saw it. Yeah, that was a better fish. <laughs> he did the typical steeler thing where he swam all the way up to the edge and then started doing the death rolls, the cartwheels. But he hit that hard. Dude, nice. Is that mine? Yep, it's yours. Slack bite. Totally slack bite. Spin it. Spin it report. Like, Oh, that's a big fish, dude. Madman with a fish, man. Dude, he's bulldogging you. The darker fish. <laughs> dude, Madman gets strokes two right here in this slot. Bulls with that fish nip just right on the belly. They're wanting that sand shrimp flavor today. Control that fish. It's a mean fish, dude. Got that belly, belly hook in his mouth, back hook, or vice versa. Coming in like a cut plus steelhead.
Pete, there it is. Madman. A little wrap on there. So well, what's left of it? <laughs> you, you caught that fish well beyond the rod. Didn't go down. It was a slack line. It was slack line bite. See it. You picked it up, kind of did the flinch, and then, oh yeah, there's one there. And it's a hatchery fish too, so we can actually keep this one. Even though he's a little bit colored up, it's a buck. And plus, it's a hatchery fish. We want him out of the system yeah, anyways. It's late, it's late March. We don't want any more of these hatchery fish in here. We don't want them to spawn with the wild fish. They have a really low success rate. He been in. He probably, probably been in a month. Good to go. <laughs> yep. So we just ran over top of this spot and we looked down and went, oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. And usually when you run over top of them in this gin clear water, they just, they didn't spook. And I think, was this one your plug, the money maker? Uh, yeah, it is, it is. So this one looks just like street walker but with a red butt. Nice, yeah, it looks like a hatchery. Smoothie. Nice, bud, that's awesome. There she is, man. She's definitely been in the river for a while, but I mean, she could be starting to rebrite up after being in the river for a little while. And that was with the money maker, and that fishnet wrap on there was the egg flavor. Yeah, was that? Yeah. Okay, the, nice. So the other couple bites we had was on the Santrum flavor fishnet. This one was on the egg flavor, and we just missed a bite. Yep, missed a bite on the coon shrimp. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same fish. Definitely could have been. Because they're the rods are both right next to each other. And a fish like this, the steelhead, they actually survive spawning pretty well. Yeah. And so they'll start to feed pretty heavily as they're starting to make their way back down river. deep throat these things. There's, yeah, no, there's wild don't. fish back here. We're doing the right thing, but I'm telling you, it's costing us. You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> ah, hold on, let me pull it back up. There he is. Hey, oh! Here, you take this one. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Okay, I'm on the worst one. Yep, that's a mess. <laughs> Are you free? Yeah. Oh, double up! Oh. Well, there it goes. Oh. Big one. Yep. Uh, that's a problem. Here, hold this, hold this, hold this. I'm pushing. That's a big fish with my rod. <laughs> yeah, you just threw my rod in the water. <laughs> You're looking for a fishing rod. <laughs> that was a big fish, dude. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna find it. It's clear water. Dude, that was a big fish. Yeah. That's a big fish. Oh yeah, all sorts of wrapped up. Tangled up and everything. Be looking out there. Okay, it's got one hook in the left jaw. Okay, hooks out. Okay. There you go. There it is. There it is. This is one of the double. Now we'll see if we can convert the rest of the double here in a minute. <laughs> that, is cool. that was the, the wild fish on bait, lightly hooked in the corner yeah, of the mouth. Right on the right side, yeah. Right, right in the corner, right perfect, yep. Yeah. Just like that. That's how you want to take off, right like that. Now yep. we gotta go find right the Right down to where my other rod is. <laughs> just got that weird glare. We're looking for a rod I just lost. Try and spook whatever's in here out of here. And if he was over here and jumped, maybe something got hung up over here. Well, second bait bite in this little slot right here. And again, we're holding the rod. Oh boy, oh, he's gonna go. We're holding the rod because we want to make sure that as soon as that fish bites, we set the hook because we don't want him taking it deep. Now, because we've been doing that all day today, we've missed a lot. Oh boy, a lot of bite. Oh, it's a jumper. Yeah, nice little fish. Hard fighter. Not very big, but good hard fighting fish. Good net job. 
Thanks. Yep, another hatchery fish right there. You can see the hook is just pinned right there. It's a beautiful looking hen. That's a good looking fish. Just a little blush on the cheek. I love that coloration on the cheek where they just get a little bit of pink. We've hooked how many fish today? How many bites? 14 bites. 14 bites. Okay. <laughs> and this is fish number five to the hand yeah. and three in the box. And it's pushing six o'clock at night. And that's because we spent a lot of time maybe looking for a fishing rod? Yeah, we kind of looked at it. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm over it. Are you, are you <laughs> Dude, sure? I, I think we've proven that you can still catch fish back trolling on plugs and diver and bait, right? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. all right. The point's been proven. Let's wrap it up. Let's lick our wounds. Go buy another fishing rod. And... Yeah, that was a good day. <laughs> yeah, it was. Good. Hey, perfect way to end it. I like it. Without a single bobber or bead in the boat, we still managed to have a great day on the water targeting steelhead. The best part of the day was watching my rod fly out of Jared's hand and into the water. That is a memory I will never forget. But guess what? He found it the very next day in the same spot where that fish had ripped it out of his hand.